called the February 6th uh, council meeting to order. And with that, we're ready to start the call Mr. Green? Here. Mr. Lydeck? Here. Dr. Middlebrooks? Here. Mr. Murphy? Here. Mr. Posey? Here. Mr. Shaw? Here. Mr. Smith? Here. If uh, we would all stand, uh, Marjorie, if you should be able to catch you tonight. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you once again for the gift of another day and for the many blessings we enjoy each day of our lives. We pray each day for your guidance in our many lives. And Lord, we hear, hear the prayers in the hearts of everyone present here tonight. Especially tonight, all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Be with them, Lord, and give them peace and comfort. We pray for this city and its citizens. And we ask that you would bestow your wisdom on the mayor and council as they lead the city forward. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Salute and pray. Salute to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We would like to thank everyone for being here tonight. Uh, not sure what brings you here, but I bet at some point during the night we will find out. Um, with that being said, I will entertain a motion for the full of noon. Mr. President, I move for approval of the minutes without reading. Second. second. We have a motion and two seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Uh, in the report section, uh, Mayor, we have a uh, presentation of the Moss Rock Festival and uh, planning project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Good evening. I'm Jennifer Wissonette. I'm with the Birmingham Auto Dealers Association, but I'm also on the Moss Rock Festival Board of Directors. And uh, we're very excited to be here tonight, and we appreciate, um, of course, our students and the, the schools and, and um, obviously the city of Hoover Mayor and Council for the support of Moss Rock. This past year was our 11th year of having the Moss Rock Festival as a preserve. Um, it is a, a unique setting, of course, that we have out there and a beautiful setting for us. And then our favorite part is to be able to in, uh, incorporate the education component to the whole entire art festival itself. Uh, just a little bit about that, um, we call it Nature and Art, and it's the Planet Project. Um, this year, the classroom projects for creative recycling, the title of it was Flocks in Migration. And the objective was to, to um, look at migratory birds and develop an understanding of their habitat, migratory patterns, and the diversity of the species. And then the students, studied all of this and they selected a certain flock out of I think the more than 350 uh, species that migrate here and, um, and did their project on that. We encourage the students to explore the, the patterns of the birds and the diversity among the birds in North America and each student then made their own sculpture and they created a flock from their classrooms or their schools and they installed it at the site of the Moss Rock Festival and this year we had flocks hanging from the trees and freestanding and it perched was. on the limbs. Fabulous. Beautiful. Absolutely fabulous. Um, so congratulations to those teachers and their students who are here tonight with us. And if you will, when I call your name, if you'll come up, and we're going to, uh, the mayor and, and Dr. Murphy and Eileen Kutzman's with the festival too, excuse me, I should have introduced you. Um, we'll give you your plaques and we'll take photos, students. So if y'all will come up with your teacher, that'd be great. Um, the first one, congratulations, goes to uh, Ms. Jana Maynard with uh, Brock Scout Intermediate School. Come on, everybody. What do you see here? Oh, 
um, Carrie McGran from Simmons Middle School. <laughs> Last but not least, Miss Julie Altmark from Chase Mountain Elementary.
We, uh, we've got great employees at the city of Hoover. Uh, it's an honor to work side by side with so many of them uh, over my career, and I thought it would be appropriate that we recognize individuals that uh, have been with us a certain amount of time, and we, we looked at the number 20 years. And so we, we want to bring before the council and the audience, anytime we have employees that have reached that milestone, we'll just recognize them and shake their hand. And, and give everyone in the audience, as well as the council, uh, an opportunity to see who these folks are. We're very proud of them. And uh, one other thing that we're going to do tonight, which uh, I think is very important, uh, in our sworn <coughs> positions, police officers and firefighters, uh, we want to recognize them as new employees, and I believe Chief Gerges is even going to swear these police officers in tonight, which I think is really Need. I'm, I'm very excited about that. So, uh, I'll ask each one of these uh, members just to come up and stand here. And here is Lance Kelly. Is Lance here with the park board? No, he's got uh, 30 years. With the fire department, Clay Bentley, Chief Bentley. Uh, Chief Bentley started with us in 1997 as a firefighter. Came to us from Birmingham Fire Department. Rose through the ranks to uh, lieutenant captain and he was promoted to battalion chief in 2016. And then we have Scott Mims. Scott's been with us since 1997. He is a paramedic uh, and he is uh, currently on the promotional list for fire lieutenant. So keep uh, flying right and everything to work out good for you there. He's a great guy and a uh, good firefighter and I enjoyed working with him for many, many years. And then Wayne Wilkie. Uh, Wayne, come on up if you would. Wayne's been with us since 1997 uh, as a firefighter. He was promoted to a fire inspector in 2010. Just a little history on Wayne. Wayne also came from Birmingham Fire Department. Uh, he was a captain there in 20, 23. 23 years. And he was the captain at Fire Station 6. The, kind of the neat thing about that, we also had a Birmingham firefighter that came through and uh, did pretty well here as, as well. And he was the captain at Fire Station 6 in Birmingham, Birmingham Fire Department. That was Chief Tom Bradley. So that's uh, uh, quite a legacy that we brought from Birmingham. Wayne, great guy. Glad to have him here. And uh, the police department, uh, Officer Johnson, Brian Johnson, come on up. Brian also came here in 1997, started as a jailer with us. And, uh, he was promoted to a police officer in 2000. So we're just uh, uh, happy that these individuals have reached this milestone, and I think it's appropriate to give them all a big round of applause. Uh, 
introduce uh, you to four of our employees and the Hoover Police Department I think has an excellent reputation uh, not only in the state but the southeast it's all about personnel I'm very proud that I'll introduce you tonight to a uh, newly uh, promoted uh, sergeant you just met uh, Brian Johnson a 20-year veteran and then we've got two uh, two new uh, employees uh, first I want to uh, uh, Mark Eastep, please come down here. He's our new uh, promotee. Uh, a little bit about uh, Mark. He has a bachelor's degree from Auburn University and then a Juris Doctorate from the University of Alabama School of Law. So he, uh, no one can get upset. Alabama Auburn, I don't know what he does to be a friend of mine. He was hired in uh, 2010 as a detention officer, became a police officer in August 11, promoted. Uh, this past month, 2017, to a patrol sergeant. Does a great job and I want to congratulate you. Thank you, Mark. from UAB and currently he is the SRO at Brock's Gap uh, Intermediate. Brian, thank you very much. <laughs> I want to introduce you to uh, two new hires, uh, Joshua Everett. Come on down, Joshua. Joshua, we just hired. Today is actually your first day on the job here. Uh, for the past three years, he's been a police officer or working in the city of Calera. And prior to that, he was three years with the city of Arlen. Uh, Welcome. Blake Walker. Blake, come on down. Blake comes uh, to us from Prattville. He was a police officer almost four years in Prattville. Prior to that, two years with the Lyons County Sheriff's Department, and he has a Bachelor's of Criminal Justice from Faulkner University. So I will swear to them in now, man. Hi, Section Hi, Josh Everett. A police officer for the city of Hoover, Alabama. Police officer for the city of Hoover, Alabama. Do solemnly swear that I will. Do solemnly swear that I will. To the best of my skill and ability. To the best of my skill and ability. Faithfully discharge all duties required of me. Faithfully discharge all duties required of me. And execute the orders of my superior officers. And execute the orders of my superior officers. And in all cases to uphold and enforce. And in all cases to uphold and enforce. The Constitution, the criminal laws and constitution of the state of Alabama. The criminal laws and constitution of the state of Alabama. The ordinances of the city of Hoover. The ordinances of the city of Hoover. The criminal laws and constitution of the United States. The criminal laws and constitution of the United States. And obey the rules governing the police department. And obey the rules to govern the police department. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Appreciates the vital role played in those individuals who, 
as local school board members, establish policy to ensure an effective and uh, efficient and effective school system. And whereas the school board members serve as a voice that enables our community to preserve local late management and control of our public schools. And whereas school board members are charged with representing our local education interests to state and federal government and ensuring compliance with state and federal law. And whereas school board members separately devote their uh, uh, knowledge, time, talent, and advocate for our school ch children. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Frank, Bur Mayor, Frank B. Bercato, Mayor of the City of Hoover, on behalf of the City Hoover City Council and the citizens of Hoover, recognize and salute the members of the Hoover Board of Education by proclaiming January 17th as a school board member recognition month. slide over just a little bit so it's yeah just, you know. that's good that's perfect okay. one two three one two Whereas February 1st through the 28th, 2017 has been designated Career and Technical Education Month by the Association for Career and Technical Education, and whereas career and technical education offers students the opportunity to gain the academic, technical, and employability skills necessary for true career readiness, and whereas students in career and technical education programs participate in authentic, meaningful experiences that improve the quality of their education and increase student engagement and achievement, and whereas career and technical education provides students with career exploration opportunities earlier in their educational experience, which enables them to make informed and beneficial decisions about their academic coursework, as well as pursuit of established programs of study and career pathways, and whereas leaders from business and industry nationwide report increasing challenges related to addressing a skills gap and connecting qualified professionals with available careers in critical and growing CTE-related fields, including healthcare, energy, advanced manufacturing, and information technology, and whereas career and technical education prepares students for these and other fulfilling careers by offering integrated programs of study that link secondary and post-secondary education and lead to the attainment of industry-recognized <coughs> credentials, and whereas ensuring that employers have access to qualified workforce is a crucial step in ensuring productivity among the business and industry communities, as well as continued American economic growth and global competitive competitiveness. Now, therefore, I, Frank B. Burkato, Mayor of the City of Hoover, Alabama, do hereby declare February 1 through 28, 2017, as Career and Technical Education Month in Hoover, and urge all citizens to be familiar with the services and benefits offered by the Career and Technical Education programs in this community, 
and to support and participate in these programs to enhance their individual skills and productivity. Education, and she's the consummate academic. And she made best scored 105 in my last uh, first semester in my course. And she is she helps other students ESL. She translates. She's a perfect role model. She contributes positively to class discussions and all kinds of the activities that we do. I just uh, we take a whole classroom full of her every day all day long. <laughs> signed by the President of the City Council initiating the rezoning of property owned by the City of Hoover as part of the proposed Trace Crossings 11th Amendment to the PUD. Mr. Rice, if you would explain why I was asked to participate. Listen, Mr. President, members of Council, the Hoover, the City of Hoover is a part owner of some of the property that will be involved in the rezoning action that's being requested. So we needed an agent of the City to come forward and sign the physical application so that we can move through that process. 
and has been our past practice as a city to ask the council president to represent this body and then have uh, ratification after that has been submitted. So it was submitted timely so that it could be on the upcoming PNZ uh, docket and Mr. Smith was kind enough to put signature to paper so that we can move forward with that. Any questions from the council? Anyone from the audience? We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. We don't, aye. Have, aye. We don't, we don't have a motion. Oh, excuse me. We did not ask for a motion. Mr. President, I would move that we uh, approve resolution 5530-17. Second. We have a motion and a second. Now, any other comments or questions? I'm just stating the property. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay, the ayes have it. Forward, resolution 5531-17. Yes, this resolution authorizes Mayor Frank Mercado to execute an amended fee agreement with Spectrum Employee Benefits, Inc., the third-party administrator for the city's 457B retirement plan designated as the City of Hoover Deferred Compensation Plan. Mr. President, I move for approval of Resolution 5531-17. Second. I have a motion and a second. Mr. Lewis, I understand this is going to be a bit of savings for our employees? No, yes, sir, Mr. Smith. This is a uh, this is a fee change agreement. This is actually a reduction in the annual fee uh, charged by Spectrum Benefits. Um, this is paid out of funds, uh, the, the funds in, the, excuse me, the dollars in this fund. Um, so that will result in a savings for those who do participate in this plan. Thank you, sir. Any questions or comments from the council? <coughs> Yes, this resolution authorizes Mayor Frank Bracado to execute a customer service order form with CDW Direct LLC for the purchase of wireless access points from Aerohive Networks Inc., a third party cloud service provider. Mr. President, I move for approval of resolution 553217. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions from the council? Mr. President, during the, uh, during the work session, we did talk about the, the uh, the document refers to the third party agreement with Arrowhive. Did we review that and make sure that that's, it doesn't point back the other way? We're all cool with that? I, mean, I forwarded that to April, um, and she said she didn't see any issues with it. Um, I think that's normally the process that we would okay. to the attorney for Mr. Coley, do you have any comments since it was part of your Any other questions? Uh, perhaps, uh, Mr. Ogles, if you just want to speak for just a seconds on what it's just, this is since some of, a lot of these people weren't here Thursday night. Um, it's just a release form essentially to uh, say that CDW, the seller, is not, uh, I guess, liable or responsible for the service that they're selling us. Arrowhide would be the, um, the party that would be responsible for that. And thus brought the third party agreement. Yes, sir. All right. Any questions from the, from the audience? <coughs> Anything else from the council? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay, the ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Corley, resolution 5533-17. This resolution authorizes the mayor to execute a standard project resolution and maintenance agreement with the Alabama Department of Transportation for a project to plane, resurface, and permanently strike County Road 13 from the Bibb County line to County Road 52. There is no city funding involved in this project. Mr. President, I move for approval of resolution 553317. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments from the council? Any from the audience? Rod, this is just a simple, as, as simple as it looks. Yes, sir. This is a <coughs> DOT's method of uh, having us approve or shall we be notified of this process. Okay. Thank you, sir. Other comments or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Corley, resolution 5534-17. This resolution authorizes the mayor to execute a consulting and engineering services agreement with AECOM Technical Services to develop a citywide bicycle and pedestrian plan as part of an ALDOT project. 
Mr. President, I move for approval of resolution 553417. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Rice, sir, is there any information that needs to be passed along concerning this item? Right. If this is a uh, project we've been working on for several months to get funding from the DOT to allow us to do inventory of our existing facilities for bicycle and pedestrian facilities and to look at a long range plan for the city. Public meetings where we can uh, prioritize uh, projects we want to go after. We have four uh, meetings scheduled in the contract, and we try to spread those around the city to encourage participation by various stations. This is to enhance our, our green space usage. Yes, with bicycles and pedestrian paths, and connectivity, uh, access to schools, etc. Any questions or comments from the council? Any uh, design time on this? We would think uh, the process would take uh, six to nine months, uh, holding the hearings and going through the process of doing the inventory. So, uh, as far as city funds, what kind of funds are we looking at? We're looking about 40000 in city funds. And this is going to be included in the budget yet to be voted? Yes, sir. It, it, it may be included last year's budget. So I'm not possible. Any other questions from the council? Any from the audience? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay, the ayes have it. Item number 12, uh, Tim, we have uh, change order number two and change order number one. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Smith. Uh, change order number two for regular and general contractors is the closeout change order as I talked about Thursday night uh, for the site foundation package for the indoor facility out of the sports park. Uh, it ends up being a uh, deductive change order of a little over $6,400. That'll close the project out. Uh, change order number one for Brashville and Gorey is a deductive change order of a little over a million and a half dollars to uh, stop their contract uh, out there at the sports complex. Uh, at the completion of phase one. So no more phase two for uh, Brassville and Glory under this current contract. I understand this is not really a savings, it's just a moving of funds from one contract to another. That's what we would expect and hope for, Mr. Smith, is that uh, they would then be hired by the park board to continue the phase two project under the park board. So there will be a cost associated with that. By the bond money that was created last year. That's correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I don't believe we have a motion. Mr. President, I move for approval in unison of change orders number one and two. Second. Any other comments or questions from the council? Any for the audience? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay, the ayes have it. We had a C on there. That's okay. Um, this is um, a different type of document uh, that will close out Goodwin Mills and Kaywood's portion of phase two of the project. Any savings in this one? There it is, and uh, I didn't have it Thursday, for you Thursday night, but it's approximately just a little under six six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Just pocket change. All right. We could have a motion a second on item C. Mr. President, move for approval of resolution 553517. Sir. Any comments from the council? Um, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Tim, is, is that a savings or is that another movement of funds? Uh, that would be another movement of funds. Yes, sir. Anything else from the council? Anything from the audience? Seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Uh, looks like we have the first reading of Ordinance 17 2320. Mr. Corbin. Mr. President, this ordinance authorizes the lease of public property by the City of Hoover to the Public Park and Recreation Board of the City of Hoover. 
The lease of this property conveys a direct public benefit in furtherance of the public's health, safety, and welfare through the board's use of the land as an athletic field park for community use, athletic tournaments, and other public events. Westover and Mr. Rice. Is there any presentation to go along with this first reading? There is. Thank you, Mr. President. This is uh, a, an agreement between the city, a proposed long-term land lease between the city and the Hoover Park and Rec Board. And so this is in concert with the two contract modifications that you just approved. There is a community meeting that we wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of this coming Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. in the banquet room at the Hoover Met, and all of this will be discussed in great detail. I know that uh, Mr. Anderson had a recent article come out that we wanted to thank him and compliment him on. There's a lot of complicated moving parts to where we're headed with the sports complex project, but it's worth it. Uh, we've been working, I think, I think, since inauguration day with a tremendous number of our partners to try to create some change in the sports complex project itself, but, but more globally in the entire Trace Crossings footprint. So what this will do is convey the land where phase two, or the outdoor sports fields, are to be constructed through a long-term land lease to the Hoover Park and Rec Board. The contracts that were just amended will sever the work from phase one, which is the Finley Center and the RV Park expansion, and phase two, the outdoor fields, associated parking, lighting, structures, et cetera. All of phase two will move under the auspices of the Park and Rec Board. The funding will still emanate from the bond funds, as you referenced a few minutes ago, that were approved for this project. This is uh, the way that the Hoover Metropolitan Stadium came into existence in 1988. It was done through a design build under the auspices of the Hoover Park and Rec Board, so there's clear precedent for doing this in the city. What this will allow us to do is to kind of transfigure our footprint of our outdoor fields. We'll not be giving up any fields. We'll actually be expanding the size of the soccer fields to NCAA regulation size, which would be an added amenity to our own citizens and to any business that we're able to bring in through tournaments, et cetera. But it'll also do a number of different things. It'll allow for the redistribution and the thinning of the density of some of the residential development. It will not add any new homes to the global area down there, to the Trace Crossings, Black Ridge, uh, Lake Wilburn, and Toto. It will allow some of the houses that have been approved to be in one area to be moved to some 2B, 2B annexed and 2B zone residential property between the sports complex and the Cahaba River. But it would also facilitate the donation of approximately 170 acres of parkland to the city, which would be dedicated for that purpose, most of which lies directly along the Cahaba River. So this will be uh, extremely positive in terms of mitigating any environmental impact it will remove the potential of development close to the river other than our planned recreational amenities in the park. The Hoover City School System has been a great partner with us throughout this conversation. We've asked for their input on some new road work that would go in place, namely a connector road between the Hoover High School campus and Bumpus Middle School, but also a connecting drive from Stadium Trace Parkway up past Trace Crossing Elementary and to the Hoover High School campus. So it gives us much better traffic circulation there's a very challenged intersection there at Learning Lane and Stadium Trace. Many of our residents travel through there once or twice a day, along with all the high school traffic, all the Trace Crossings elementary traffic, all the school bus traffic. This will allow us to have three different methods of ingress and egress from the Hoover High School campus. And that in and of itself will be a tremendous benefit to convenience and public safety and timing. So on Thursday night, we'll have a lot of graphics to show. We'll have <coughs> uh, signature homes, U.S. Steel, the city, the school system, and all some of our other partnering entities to explain this fully and take all the time that we need to answer uh, questions and to receive any comments or feedback from anyone who would care to attend uh, at the Hoover Med in the Bank. Uh, I would also like to comment that the council has been invited to attend this meeting, uh, but we will not be there in our capacities as, as elected officials. Uh, thus, there will not be a call of meeting Correct. This is actually a community meeting sponsored by Signature Homes, and we were invited to participate and get the opportunity to, to put out the, the, the benefits to the city, and we graciously accepted that. Thank you, sir. The second reading and consideration for adoption will be at our next regular meeting on February 20th. Item 14 is a motion to approve ABC application 
for Integra Consulting Group, Inc., BDA Customs Cafe, 1845 Montgomery Highway, Suite 207. This is a change in ownership on a previously approved, approved site, uh, which had been on tap Sports Cafe. Mr. Shaw, do you have a recommendation? Yes, Mr. President, I move that we approve the NDC application for Integra Consulting. Sorry. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions from the council? Any from the audience? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay, the ayes have it. Item 15, considering the uh, request for retail beer and table wine at the two Comic Theater sites has been withdrawn by the applicant, and we do not at this point uh, anticipate any further actions by this body or anyone else. Uh, Lida, the a healthy status, Mr. Smith, and I recommend the payment in full. It's yes, a pretty big step this time. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Any questions from the council? Any from the audience? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Those opposed nay, the ayes have it. Uh, the bills can be paid. Whoever's in charge of pay. There you are. Uh, any comments or questions from the council? Uh, Mr. President, I have two items. Yes, sir. Uh, first, I'd like to invite everyone uh, on Sunday, February the 19th, uh, through the coordination of Councilman Murphy, uh, the Hoover Public Library, specifically Amanda Borden and Jeremy Davis, the new uh, excuse me, the new Children's Department head, has arranged a book signing. Uh, for this uh, young lady of Deer Valley, Nehemiah Reese. She has written and published her first book. Uh, so the library will be holding a book signing for her at 3 p.m. on the 19th. Uh, through Barnes & Noble, they will have they'll be selling copies of her book there. And Amanda, will, will there be any uh, refreshments? There will be refreshments. And there will be refreshments for, for the public to participate. So I encourage everyone to come out and support this young lady and, and uh, encourage her achievements. What are the times again, Dr. 3 p.m. on Sunday, February 19th, Hoover Public Library. Thank you, sir. And she is a uh, student of Deer Valley. Thank Secondly, uh, a week or so ago when we had our special meeting uh, for SFM, uh, at that time I encouraged uh, the general manager, Monty Jones, of the Hoover Met Sports Complex to reach out to our schools and uh, community for some of our uh, unskilled labor uh, worker positions that would come up to try to hire some of our special needs uh, community in those spots. I think if you look at Publix and Walgreens, they do an excellent job uh, hiring some of these individuals. And uh, I think the public appreciates their efforts in doing so. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to encourage and challenge our other department heads in the city to do the same. Uh, reach out to our schools. I, I've spoken with uh, the Hoover City Schools new instructional support director, Claire Jones Moore. She's excited about the possibilities and she would love to talk to you about some of our transitional services for our individuals uh, graduating from high school and going on to the job market. So. Perhaps uh, you'd like to schedule her to come to a future meeting to say a few words? Sure, if anyone needs your contact information, I can certainly provide that as well. All right. Any other comments from the council? Mr. President, uh, yes, there will be an annexation committee meeting immediately following this meeting. Uh, there's a pretty good crowd here, so how many people are planning to attend that meeting? Okay, we will have that meeting back here in the conference room. Also, congratulations are to be had for the Hoover High School indoor track team understand that they literally blew away the competition in the recent indoor meet. Another group of state champions by our school system, and I'm sure we will be inviting them in the near future for a, a better set of, uh, of appreciation. Any other questions, statements from the council? Any from the audience? Lisa Reed and I reside in Hoover and 
first I'd like to. Do you have your physical address? Today? Yes, 2124 Roslyn Drive, R O S L Y N 35216. And first I'd like to say it's with respect and I'm honored to be here. And it's with a little bit of disappointment. And two of our council members have heard me recite this at least 12 times before, but I'm going to make an effort with this new council. To, to come with a clean slate and address these serious issues. Um, in that the Chapel Hill neighborhood is in the northeast quadrant of Rocky Ridge Road and Lorna Road, and there is continued blight, a, a general um, falling apart. And I know the broken windows theory has some problems with it, but there's some validity to that. I was trained for three days in Quantico on the broken windows theory, and it's happening in Chapel Hill right now. Um, we have some serious blight. We have some serious violations of general single family dwelling. The problem with that is that if, if nine or 10 cars are parked, work trucks are parked in one small yard, it starts causing erosion. <laughs> and it starts causing water problems for other neighbors. It's also uh, not within the definition of what a single family resident is. Uh, I have, we have uh, so many multiple issues there, but one of the main problems we're having right now, I called the um, animal control over a year ago because we had some young people that had, didn't understand the importance of spay and neuter, maybe didn't have the cultural awareness about spay and neuter. So we had the first batch of kittens. Then we had the next batch of kittens. And thank you to Mr. Robert Mack. He has been diligent in trying to deal with this. We now have a hoarder on this street that is um, taking in these animals. And not only does she take in animals, anything that's put on the street, she has put in her home and on her property. I am trying to renovate my property. I am currently residing both on campus at Indian Springs School because my husband teaches there and I'm an alumni there and I also live in Mount Brook, but I own the property here. And I'm ha in a spot where many of the neighbors have got to decide, is the council with us or is it just because it was a house that my father bought when I came to go to UAB. He said, don't rent an apartment, buy a house. So we bought this house and I was a single person. My brother was a single person. So it was a perfect single family dwelling for us. There is general neglect. There are lots of trailers and wrecked cars that don't have up to date tags on it. I want to thank the police department because they held a meeting for our neighborhood to make us aware. We don't have a lot of crime other than it, uh, lots of loitering and crimes of opportunity. If you're dumb enough not to lock your car, don't be surprised if your purse and your briefcase and your laptop go. You know, you know, that's a little bit of you know responsibility on the owner. So we don't have a lot of crime, but we are having an uptick, according to the police department, of crimes of opportunity. Um, the number of itinerant workers that are I will say and admit openly that I am an attorney, <laughs> so don't hold that against me. I'm a social worker and an attorney, but there is a definition of what a single family dwelling is. There is a definition of what loitering is, and the, the increased loitering, if, if you come, I have asked council members before, I told them I would rent a van and drive them or let one of them drive and we could all observe the amount of blight that's going on. There's lots of construction that occurs in that neighborhood on Saturdays and Sundays, when of course the Robert Mack's not gonna be able to inspect on those if, days. If I could ask real quick, you used the word uh, 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 itinerant workers. Could, could you uh, Those would be workers that, um, that time? yes, those would be workers that, um, particularly um, hang out at a specific area to be day laborers for cash and um, work, work trucks come by by the hundreds to pick them up and they mainly hang out at the Chevron at the corner on the other quadrant of that Rocky Ridge Road and Lorna Road and, and I don't have any problem with that other than it is blight. 
It is why it is not what we would put on the front page of Hoover magazine, and and it is it is an embarrassment to I can I don't feel comfortable. I now feel comfortable to invite friends to come to my home, but it had become so so much trash, disarray, uh, impossibility to pass on the roads because of nine work trucks in one area on one piece of property. And, and I'm willing, I don't want to fight with my neighbors. I, I don't want to be the police officer of my neighbors. We are a neighborhood. I'm willing to work collaboratively. And I do think, and I spoke with Mr. Mack about this, I'm more than willing to um, try to get into the Charter Our Community program because we have now left that neighborhood, not we just as homeowners, but mostly the city not enforcing basic I will give you a real quick example. I know everybody wants to go home. A real quick example, when I have relatives that live in other parts of Hoover, that are the more high-end parts of Hoover, and all when the trash bins were, the contract was renewed, they, they did not pick up any of the bins. So now all the people in my neighborhood have four, I have two recycling bins and two trash bins. It is horrendous. It's unattractive. It's it's another public health issue. Could uh, Mr. Rice could he check with Santec and see if they should be have picked up those previous cans or should have been the responsibility of the trees? Um, Thank you, sir. So and um, I'll move right along. Mr. Mack, Mack assisting you now? Uh, well, he now? he he has been of assistance, but we haven't had the city attorney enforce or either the respondents have not replied to the notice from the city attorney about the hoarding the public health issue of hoarding um and, and that there's certain amounts of time that have to go by before well yeah it's been um over a half it's been nine months yeah. not a little more than nine months mr corley has any of your staff worked with this young lady I would be more than willing to collaborate with you, but I do think that it, in that we have let that neighborhood become such a blighted area um, that we would be great candidates for the charter of our community. There are some elderly people that live in that neighborhood that maybe need some help with their properties. They've probably owned that since they first moved to Hoover. I was able to identify those people at the um, meeting the police department had for us at the command center. And we have people that are willing um, to, to provide information, but we don't want to fight as neighbors. We want to work collaboratively. The last thing you want to do is to be in a fight with your neighbors. I, I believe that we've, we've got a pretty good understanding of the needs. Uh, I believe that this is going to be a perfect candidate for the Neighborhood Viability Committee once it gets stood up. I'm still working with Ms. Danielson. Well, I will continue to keep in contact and I appreciate the council's time and um, I'm very honored to have this as my counsel. I think you're a professional counsel, you're an honest counsel, and I have been disappointed, but I know that, you know, things move slow sometimes in committees and things like that, but I will always make myself available to facilitate any collaboration we can do to really address that because I'm at the point now I have to decide whether to sell that home or to invest money to rent it. That we, people that are trying to rent now cannot rent. They're having to rent for less than $1,000 a month, and that's really not a, what the value. I know that in the 2008 crash, we took our, our lumps, but now we're not recouping at the same rate other properties are recouping at. And thank you for your time. Yes, ma'am. Well, we have a new legal staff, and uh, Sure that they're going to be eager to work with you and others in the future. Thank you so much. Um, yes, ma'am. I think I'm about the only one that knows where you stay, so. <laughs> I'll do that. My name is Lisa Harris. I'm at 2240 Rock Circle up in the Bluff Park neighborhood. And I just wanted to briefly 
uh, speak because I've been started. I started coming to city council meetings regularly right after the election, and I was really interested in becoming more involved at a local level in local government. That's really where things started. I was part of a pretty large group of people from Bluff Park and Hoover who participated in the Women's March in Alabama on January 21st, and we also had had several folks from our from uh, Bluff Park group who went to Washington, which involved a 12-hour bus ride. I just decided to stay home. <laughs> But I wanted to let you know that there are people in Hoover who are starting to get more involved. We kind of stay quiet raising our kids, and we've started to see how important it is to get involved at a local level. We're really interested in doing things that will help keep Hoover as a diverse and welcoming city. I, I personally have two issues that I started, that I, I came to council to keep an eye on which is local policing, especially as relates to the immigrant community, and LGBT rights, which is something I'm very concerned about. I have several family members who are part of that community. So I just wanted to let you guys know who I am and why I'm sitting out here every week and why I come to council, or every other week and why I come to council meetings. And I'm hoping that some more of our Bluff Park folks will start, will be able to come and participate. And we look forward to being involved in boards and committees that a couple of them might even end up on a ballot someday. So we look forward to working with you for the next years to come. Thank you. Bill doesn't want to come with you anymore? Uh, everybody always wants to talk to him, so I asked him to just stay home tonight. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. You want to come on down? My name is Kaylee Doak, and I'm actually not a Hoover resident. Um, I'm here on behalf of the 99th Air Refueling Squadron's key spouse group. We're based out of the airport. Um, a lot of people don't seem to know we're here, so we're kind of trying to come out and raise community awareness that there is an active duty base here. We have approximately 70 active duty members on this base with about 20 actual families. There's more family members, but 20 with families. They reside all throughout Birmingham including some here in Hoover. And then um, two of us actually work here in Hoover, so we spend a great deal of time here. So we're just kind of trying to spread awareness that we're here, and um, we're just trying to get involved with the local community a little bit more. Well, thank you. I believe your colonel is out there is a former Hoover police officer. Trey Bass? Is he part of the guard or is he active? Uh, he's active. Well, he's an he's active part. civilian. Part of the that she's yes. He may be part of the 117th yes. Refueling Squadron. We work in unison with them, okay. but this squadron that I'm referring to is completely active duty, as in the PCS, uh, permanent change of station, like other active duty families. Um, my husband and I came here from England um, and got based here, and we've lived in the area for approximately four years. Um, but the base, for some reason or another, a lot of people just aren't aware that there's active duty here. So. We were all aware of the day Air Force One landed a few years back. Right. <laughs> How long have you been here now? We've been here in Alabama for four years. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming. No problem. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So my name is Melanie Stiers. Um, I also am from the Bluff Park neighborhood. I live at 2141 Bluff Road. Um, and it's been really exciting tonight. This is the first time I've ever been to a city council meeting. And it's been really exciting tonight to see this group of people who came in front of you to get recognized, how diverse they are, how they really represent all of Hoover, all kinds of people, particularly those kids. There were all kinds of people here tonight. And one thing that I'm really passionate about, while we have some exciting new faces on the city council, if you look at the city council, certainly it doesn't represent about 50% of Hoover. And I think we might even need some men on the beautification board for that matter. So um, I'm really interested in ways to make sure that our city government is hearing from all of our diverse constituencies in Hoover. We have lots of geographic, socioeconomic, racial, cultural, gender, all kinds of diversity in Hoover. Um, and so I guess I have two major questions for you. So one is, 
There was some discussion of having listening meetings across the city during the um, elections. And I, wa I wanted to know if there have been, if you guys have been talking about ways that you could get more input from those diverse constituencies across Hoover, whether it's through that or through some kind of survey, some kind of um, climate survey to get an idea of what's really going on for all of these diverse groups in Hoover. And then my second question is, in reality, if we're gonna diversify city government, it's going to have to start at, at lower levels, right? So I wanted to know if there are ways that you're looking at diversifying some of these boards. So the only way to diversify the boards is really to make sure that we have a diverse pool of applicants, ultimately, right? So are you thinking about ways that you could reach out to different groups across Hoover to potentially diversify that pool of applicants? So the two questions were, how are you gonna diversify the boards and how are you gonna reach out to diverse constituencies? Well, we have a number of our boards our folks, um, whether we have African American, such as Mr. Murphy, um, uh, uh, females, we have ladies, obviously, on the education board, uh, on planning and zoning, and, and other boards. Um, we have on the board of education, we have two ladies. Um, and, uh, and I think that, you know, one, they obviously need make yourself available, but when it comes to elected positions, they're going to have to uh, put their stuff on the ballot. So I understand those things, and I still don't think that probably our boards are really representative of the diversity across Hoover. Um, Mr. President, if I can, if I can. Yes, sir. I respond. I think uh, most of us have talked about one of the major ch uh, channels utilizing the social media. What we have done, uh, applaud a lot of our council and uh, our present team, Smith, for my own this council to be on different uh, 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 committees. For instance, we have an education committee, the Department of Rec committee, and uh, I can't say these gentlemen are having public meetings now. That uh, probably wasn't put forth. Uh, we're trying to live stream, we're trying to use social media. We're, uh, we're uh, uh, Mr. President, I uh, talked about trying to diversify and reach out to our communities that are are more historical. So, uh, you know, it's, I think it's a building block process. We were a brand new council with, with uh, uh, three uh, of our uh, wise uh, council members that are helping us with the historical things as well. But I think it starts with uh, just just getting out of our community, having those meetings, having those town hall meetings, but starting with our, our uh, committee meetings to uh, things of that nature. Uh, that takes time. Uh, and, uh, for, and I'll give you one example. Uh, Many of these gentlemen, when they ran for council, uh, actively sought for women to run, even if it means running against them. I mean, I, I can tell you that for for for, uh, for points. And so, I think it's just going to take time and also action and, and using social media and getting those communities to make that happen. But uh, I think we're get there. But we have to just kind of develop a plan. How we going to move in that direction? Sounds good. Thank you. We'll keep us posted. Any other questions from the audience? No? Anything else from the council? With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Sorry. All in favor, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Okay.